Hello everyone, my name is Joseph and today I am going to be giving you my personal testimony of my near-death experience slash vision. I'm going to go back to my childhood and then take you through it, so be patient, but I believe when you tell a testimony you should give background as well. Uh, that's just my opinion on that and my take on that, okay? So basically, I was raised in a family of five boys. My parents worked in factories. You know, they worked in, a, uh, in, in factories. They worked very hard. They raised five boys. When I was 13 years old, I had a brother, and he joined the U.S. Marine Corps, and he went to basic training in Paris Island, and uh, he was 19 years old. I was 14, 13, 14 years old. I was about 13. I was in eighth grade at the time, okay? I believe 8th grade, 7th or 8th grade. I was in junior high. And a long story short, basically what happened there was um, my brother joined the U.S. Marines. He went to boot camp in Paris Island, South Carolina. And he, he arrived in boot camp on a Monday, December 1. He died on Wednesday, December 3rd. And his body came back in a casket on Saturday, uh, December 6th, which was my brother's 16th, my other brother's 16th birthday. So a lot of tragedy, you know what I'm saying? And I got called out of school. We all got called out of school by my neighbor, and she brought us all home. And I went through the door, and my mother was crying. And you know, there was a priest in the house, and the Marines were in the house, and and my brother was dead. You know, like he died in three days in boot camp, and I was devastated. I was like, Are you kidding me? Now I'm 13 years old, so I'm hating God now. I'm hating. I'm hating God. I'm hating the Marine Corps. And I'm hating life, okay? So shortly after, I'm 14 years old. I'm doing drugs. I'm smoking marijuana. I'm doing cocaine at 15, 16 years old, okay? And I got into drugs. I, I just walked away from God at that point, you know? And uh, I just, I, I was, uh, I was just uh, bitter. I was bitter and angry. I was hating the world. Through high school, I fornicated. I had sex. You know, I had a girlfriend having sex out of marriage, you know, I just got off track. I hated life, you know, I just hated life. And then, uh, so that went on, you know, 1980, I graduated high school, you know, you know, 81, 82, 1983, four or five, six, and I'm still partying, no direction in life, no career, nothing. I just, I just was going downhill. And then in 1986, okay, so 1980, uh, 1986, I quit smoking marijuana January, January of 1986, I quit smoking marijuana, I quit drinking. I said, there's got to be something more. There's got to be something more to life, you know, and I'm like, I just, I was unhappy. I was searching for truth, okay? Um, so January of 1986, I quit smoking uh, marijuana. I quit doing cocaine. I was drinking at the time. I quit all of that. In June of 1986, I started my own video production company, and I worked out of my parents' house. It was ridiculous, actually. You know, I had two VCRs and a camcorder. You know, back then it was VHS, you know, but, you know, I started my own career. It started very slow, and I ended up becoming very successful, but we'll get to that later. So anyway, January of 86, I quit partying. June of 86, started my own video production company. In September, like, I'm saying, okay, so I quit doing drugs. I quit having sex, too. I quit having sex. I stopped dating. And, like, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm seeking God. I'm seeking truth, you know. Then I was in the yellow pages. Okay, yeah, that shows my age. There was, there was no internet back then. So, you know, we're talking 1986. And I got into the yellow pages, and I found a Christian, uh, Christian place in a, in a town that's over from me here. And he told me that, you know, that that's good that you're seeking. Then he directed me to another church in another town. And I, and, and I went to that Christmas service now. Now, hear me out. No drugs, no women. I repented from my sins. I just stopped. You know, I didn't even know what repentance was. I just stopped sinning, but I didn't realize I was repenting, okay? But I stopped doing everything for a year, and I went into this church, okay? It was Christmas service, 1986, and I went forward on an altar call, and they said, is there anyone who would like to accept Jesus as their Savior? And I said, wow. I'm like, it, the Lord was like... I'm telling you, I felt the presence of God right through me. I'm not saying you're all going to feel that, okay, but I did, and God was working on me. You know, he loved me, and he knew I went through so much stuff, you know, and I had stuff happen to me. I, I was abused as a child. I'm not going to go into that. So I had a really bad childhood from when I was 7 till I was 13 years old, okay, and God loved me, and I went forward, and I had tears in my eyes, and I surrendered myself to Jesus. So 
okay, that was Christmas service, 1986. In May of 87, I proposed to my wife at the time. I'm divorced now. I'll just speed it right up. I'm not married to her anymore. And I proposed to my I, I accepted my life to Christ in December of 1986. In May of 1987, I proposed to my wife in, uh, in July. I met her in May. I'm sorry here. I met her in May of 87. I proposed in July, and I got married in December. And I was dating all these worldly women back in the day. And she came from a, you know, she was a born-again Baptist, you know, born-again Christian. So I'm saying, okay, hey, she's saved. I'm saved. Let's get married. And I rushed my marriage, people. You know, I didn't pray about it. I didn't bring it to prayer. I was a brand-new baby Christian, you know. But anyway, you know, I got married. And then, so I got married in 1987. And then the marriage failed. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. But I was married from 1987. I had two children. I still do. They're doing very well. They're older now. And so 1987, I got married. 1997, I got divorced. And that's when it got stupid for me. It got really stupid. Um, 1997, I got, went through a bad divorce. I lost a big house. Not that it's about money, but, you know, I lost everything. I lost my finances. I lost relationship with my children. Most importantly, that, that was bad. You know, I lost relationship with my children, okay? Um, it takes two for divorce. I had my sins. She had her sins. Not getting into that here today. The bottom line is that I was married in 1987. I was divorced in 1997, okay? After that, my divorce was so bad, uh, I ran a video production company, okay? As I said, I started my company in 1986. And in 1997, when I got divorced, I was into my video production company 10 years, and my business was jamming. I mean, I was making a lot of money, people. And even, even after my divorce started, my proceedings started, my divorce took a year and a half, okay? But anyway, I got divorced in 1997. My video career took off. You know, I was making money. I had two BMWs. I had two Harley Davidsons. I had a hot tub in the backyard, and I had a big house, and I had any woman I wanted. I'm not pumping myself here. It's not even funny. But back then, I, you know, I had six-pack abs, and I was a pretty boy, you know what I mean? But I was narcissistic. I was selfish. I was, I was living my way, not for Jesus, you know. But that pastor told me, he told me I was saved from my past, present, and future sins, and that stuck with me my whole life, my friends, okay? And now that's a big lie, and we're going to get into that later in the video, and I'm going to tell you why. But that's a big lie, my friends. Don't ever let a pastor, priest, minister... Uh, determine your your salvation okay read your Bible and you'll know the truth okay I'm not gonna get off here I need to focus I need to I, I can't get off on a different path there I need to focus now but what I'm saying to you is that I sinned so bad people like you know from 1997 all the way until 2004 I'm talking multiple multiple sex with women multiple women you know with sex uh, drugs drinking you know nothing criminal you know nothing criminal there but anyway in uh, July 25th, 2004, I was with my, with my existing girlfriend at the time. We were fornicating. We were having sex out of marriage. You know, I never got remarried, okay? And I justified my sins. I'm like, I just, I don't know, maybe I just didn't care. I just was serving the world. Like, I, I didn't believe in hell or, you know, whatever, you know. I just was like a free-for-all. It was ridiculous. Okay, so here we go. Here's my testimony. July 25th, 2004, I part partook in drugs with my my girlfriend at the time and I overdosed on drugs people I'm not gonna say what drugs I did because I'm not going to promote them here okay there's no need to promote what drugs I did but I overdosed on drugs okay and and what happened to me was I, I all of a sudden I was in this world and in a, in a twinkling of an eye I'm snapping my fingers here in a twinkling of an eye I was in another dimension I was not on earth here as we know it now I was confined to my house. My body was on the bed, but I was, my soul was wandering in my home. I was eternally separated from God. That is biblical, okay? And here's what happened to me. I was wandering around my house aimlessly, okay? And I'm like going from a room to the other room to another room, and I'm, you know, what's going on here? Like, I, I was like, this is weird. I go, like my phone was there, but I couldn't use it. My, um, my front door was there, but I couldn't go out. Like I was a spirit. I can't explain it. I was in my body, but yet I was in my soul. And I was walking around my house in this experience, and my girlfriend at the time was there. 
And I started to say, something's wrong here, man. And I started getting very paranoid. And, and, and I knew that I was not on planet Earth anymore. I knew that I crossed over. I knew I was in another dimension. I felt like I died and I was dead. This is how I felt, people, okay? So I felt like I died and I crossed over. And I'm wandering around my house aimlessly. And I'm like, I started getting scared. Fear. I have, you have no idea. And I hung around with drug dealers, gang members, bikers. And, you know, I may not look like, I might look like a pretty boy to you, but I, I had a biker side back in the day. And uh, I hung around with some rough people, but uh, nothing scared me as much as what was going on. It was mental torment, mental anguish, okay? At one point, I picked up my daughter's photos. Actually, I looked at them, rather. I looked at my daughter's photos on the table, and I said, I love you guys. I miss my kids. Like, you know, I love you guys. And then, like, there was no tears, my friends. I couldn't shed a tear. I had no love in me. I was hollow. It was pure evil, okay? And then as, as time went on, like, I could not come to a happy thought, meaning I tried to focus on my kids. I used to take them to the beach, and as soon as I would start thinking about the beach and the sand or whatever, boom, I was back into fear. Like, you know what I mean? I couldn't come to a happy time. There's no rest in hell. God showed me that. The Bible says there's no rest in hell. There is no time where I was. People said to me, like, well, how long were you there? There is no time. You were just there. You existed. It was like a magnetic field. You know what I mean? In a twinkling of an eye, I was on planet Earth. In a twinkling of an eye, boom, I was in another dimension. That's how fast it happens, my friends, okay? I say, boom, okay, there was no time. It just, I was in an eternal void. I was there for my sins, and I knew that. I knew that as my experience started getting more fear, more fear, and my, my conscience told me I knew why I was there. I was sinning. I was doing my own thing. And I said to myself out loud, you've got to be kidding me. But but I thought, I was like saying that in my in my mind, like, but, 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 but I was like stuttering. But, but, but I thought, you know, that the pastor said, and, and, I, and I thought that God loved me, and I thought that this, and I thought that that. And it was my sin that got there, my friends. And I knew it as I was, my fear started to kick in. It started to get worse, started to get worse. Okay, so here's where it gets crazy. Okay. I said, I had a Bible in the house. Again, I'm in my soul, I'm in my spirit, but I had a Bible in my house. And I turned to my Bible. I picked up the Bible, my friends, and I opened it up. I said, all right, I'm going to turn to the word of God and I'm going to, whatever, I'm going to pray myself out of this. I'm going to pray myself out of hell. Okay. Doesn't happen, my friends. I opened my Bible. Okay, hear me out. Look me in the eye here. I opened my Bible, people, and every page was blank. I flipped through the pages, and every page was blank, okay? I mean, there was no more word of God. It was eternal separation from God. And I'm saying, God, you got to be kidding me. And I said to myself, I didn't say it out loud, I said to myself, oh, my God, I'm in hell. Okay, I was in hell, people, you know, and I couldn't get out, and I was freaking out. It was because of my unrepentant sins, my willful sins, okay? I was stuck for all eternity. I was flipping out, man. Okay. So, so then I'm like, I think if I said it out loud, I would have sealed my fate. Okay. I would have sealed my fate. I think if I said, oh my God, I'm in hell. And then, and, and so now I'm walking around my house. This is going on and on. And it's still going on. Now I'm like, I'm pondering in my head. I'm like, the Bible pages are blank. There's no more word of God. I'm telling you right now, people, I was in hell. I was in a dimension of hell. But I was in a dimension of hell. Okay, God used this experience uh, to teach me that hell is real. Eternal separation, that is biblical. Okay, uh, so this is where I was. And I was flipping out, people. I was like, I was like, I knew I was never getting out. And I will tell you this right now, my friends. I tasted eternal uh, separation from God. It is horrible. There's no rest, okay? You can't sleep. It just goes on and on and on. It's like a magnetic field, okay? I was stuck in this dimension for eternity. I had no purpose. There was no purpose where I was. I was just bebopping through my house like it was hor horrible, okay? It was horrible. It was horrifying, okay? I'm just bebopping through my house with no purpose. It was torment. It, w it was isolation, you know, yet my girlfriend was in my experience, but, and she was laughing at me, actually. My girlfriend in my experience was laughing at me. She's saying, do things seem to keep repeating themselves? Like it was like demonic, okay? Then, and and, and you can say, you know, I'm going to say something to you here, okay? And you can believe it or not, but the voice of Satan or the voice of a demon said to me, gotcha, you fool, and was laughing at me. Now, I've heard other testimonies on YouTube. I've, I've watched them. I've seen them. I've heard them. And where they say Satan mocks and laughs, okay? And he was laughing at me. Gotcha, you fool. 
you know, and Jesus called people fools back in the day, okay? Like you're fools, like, you know, you're serving the devil and everything. And Satan said to me, or a demon said to me, I didn't see a demon, but I heard the voice. He said, gotcha, you fool. Ha, 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 ha. He's laughing in his demonic voice. And I'm like, now I'm like, oh, my God, I know him in hell. You know what I mean? People, it was real. Hell is real. Okay, I'm not making this up. This is a real story, and hell is real. And I said, oh, my God, I'm just, like, flipping out, okay? And the fear just started getting more and more. And at, after a point, I couldn't even get to a happy thought. I couldn't think of, like, uh, I went to the beach with my daughters, okay? You can't even think a happy thought. It's total fear. The mental anguish was crazy enough, my friends, okay? So here, here's what happens now. I kept praying, not praying, yeah, I was praying, I was speaking, God help me, Jesus help me. He did not come to my rescue. He let me He let me ride that out, my friends, on purpose. Okay, he let me ride that out, so I, I knew what hell was, and I tasted eternal separation from God, okay? So then, I, I, I said to myself, I said, I said these words, I said, I choose life. I don't know what, I don't you know, I didn't even, that's in the Bible. I didn't even know it was in the Bible, okay? I just said, I choose life. And all of a sudden, my soul, I guess it was my soul, came spiraling back out of the universe, okay? As my soul was spiraling back out of the universe, I was saying out loud, like, oh my God, these people on earth here have no clue what awaits them on the other side. We live life every day, and we bebop around and do good, do bad, whatever, okay? There is a hell, there is a heaven. I haven't tasted heaven yet. He hasn't shown me heaven. And, and I'm not worried about that because I have 200% faith. I don't need to see heaven. Some of you people here see heaven. You see Jesus. You see God. That's awesome. I don't condemn that. He hasn't given me the heaven uh, dream or vision yet, and that's okay. And I think he doesn't give it to me because I don't need to see it because I have 200% faith. Not even because of the hell experience. I just believe that Jesus is real. He died for my sins. He, he, he shed his blood on the cross. He rose on the third day. I believe it all. I have 200% faith. So I don't want to get sidetracked here. But I, but I came spiraling back and I said, people have no clue what's going on, what goes on when you cross over onto the other side. And God showed me that, people. And then when I came to, my, my soul went back into my body. I was on my bed and I was clammy, cold, sweaty, and I was white as a ghost, according to my girlfriend at the time. And she was sitting at the foot of the bed and she's, she's laughing at me. She goes, you all right? She goes, you've been here for a while. You look like you've seen a ghost, you know? And I'm like, huh. I, was, I wasn't laughing, people. I'm like, listen to me. I looked her in the eyes. Listen to me. We were fornicating, having sex. I wasn't in love with her. You know, we were just lusting, you know? And I looked her right in the eyes. Listen to me. I love you as a friend, but we're done. I'm not having sex with you anymore. I took my drugs and threw them down the toilet within, within 20 minutes or half hour, whatever. I threw all my drugs away. She goes, you know, don't throw that away. I said, just shut up. You know what I mean? I'm throwing my drugs away. I said I was in hell, and, and let me tell you this, people, after that experience, like I slept with the light on for two months in my bedroom throughout my house, you know what I mean? It's just the evil presence, like it, it's powerful. There is evil in the world, okay? We fight spiritual darkness. We don't fight flesh against flesh, okay? So we do fight evil, okay? And then, so I broke up with her. I made amends with everybody that I had hurt in the past. I just felt it, but let me back up. After this experience, immediately God told me that the wages of sin is death, okay? And he said to me, you repent. If you don't repent, you're going straight to hell. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, powerful stuff, my friends. I was glad. I couldn't believe I came out of that. I thought I was never coming out of it, my friends, okay? I thought I was never coming out of it. So I made amends with my ex-wife. I made amends with my children at the time, uh, girlfriends that I treated bad back in the day. I found them. I apologized to them. Anybody I wronged, I apologized to. I just, I had to like redeem myself. I had to make it right, okay? So what I'm saying to you is like, you know, it really happened to me. But hear me out. This is very important now. This is a very important part of my testimony. Three years later, I was still going to the movies back then. But three years later, I went to the movies and I went to see the movie 1408, 1408. That's the name of the movie, 1408. I went to see the movie, and John Cusack was the actor. And in the movie, he's a person that doesn't believe in God. He investigates haunted houses, 
and he doesn't believe in demons, he doesn't believe in good or evil, and he pretty much hated God because his daughter, who was like, I don't know, 12 years old, she died of cancer, okay, she died of cancer, and he was bitter. So he would make money on going to these supposedly haunted houses, and then he'd write a story about it. He didn't believe in, in the evil anyways. He's making money, bebopping through life, okay? So what happens to John Cusack? It, now, this movie came out three years later. So my near death, I didn't, like, make it up from the movie. The movie came out three years later. I just need to clarify that to you. And then listen what happened. Here's, my, here's the breaking point of my testimony. This movie comes out three years later. He's in the hotel room. He says, okay, God, you win. You win, God. So he pulls out the Gideon Bible because every hotel has a Gideon Bible in it, okay? He pulls out the Gideon Bible, and he says, okay, God, you win. He turns, the, and I'm in the movie here three years later, and I'm in the movie. I'm alone now. He opens up the Bible, and every page was blank. He's flipping through the pages. Every page was blank, my friends. That movie came out three years later, okay? So my point to you is that I got goosebumps now telling a story right here in my arms. I got goosebumps when that happened in the movies. And so now I'm going to wind down my testimony, okay? Here, here's where I'm going to wind it down. Don't you ever let a pastor, priest, minister, I don't care, anybody in the church buildings, even on YouTube, whatever, don't you ever let anybody tell you that you're saved for your past, present, and future sins. Number one, if somebody tells you that, you will never bear any good fruit for the Lord. You will think that you're saved, and, and it's Satan's biggest lie. I have brochures when I go out and, and do evangelism in the street or in a mall, wherever I go. I have brochures that say Satan's biggest lie in the end times is once saved, always saved. And here we go. In 1986, a pastor told me, you know, Joseph, you're saved now for your past, present, and future sins. You are saved. You're, you're sealed by the, by the Holy Spirit, and you're, you're locked in. Okay? I believed that lie. I didn't bear any fruits. I, I fornicated. I had sex. I did drugs. Uh, drank. You know what I mean? I was a sinner. I lied. I cheated. You know, I stole. Not criminally, but just stole. You know what I mean? It's crazy. You know, like, well, like for a pencil, you know, I stole something from work, paper towels, you know what I mean? I guess it is criminal, okay? But those, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the old days. That's gone. That's all history now. But what I'm saying is that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just sinned and I didn't bear any good fruit for the Lord. And then God showed me a dimension of hell. And the Lord told me, the wages of sin is death. And if you don't repent from your sins and follow me, you're going to hell. You know what I mean? So you could take this testimony for whatever it's worth. For those of you who believe it, that's awesome. For those of you who are skeptical, read your Bible. Get in the Word of God. He loves you. Jesus doesn't want you to perish. Okay? You know what I mean? I, that pastor was sending me to hell. I believe that lie. Okay? Hell is real. It's very real, my friends. It's, I wasn't even in the real place, but I tasted eternal separation from God. And that mental torment, oh my God. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? It changed my life. Okay? All right, people? So I love you. I, I appreciate you listening. Okay? Um, anything else I have to add? Let me just think here. Um, I don't do drugs anymore. I don't drink anymore. I'm on a straight and narrow. Okay? I have the joy of serving Jesus. Okay? I'm out there helping people, trying to help people to learn about Jesus. And, and I'm a seed planter. Okay, to help them accept Jesus as their Savior, to, to tell them that they need to live on the straight and narrow. Okay, they need to repent from their sins. Okay, we just can't do what we want. Because if that's the case, people, then we're all getting up into heaven. Think about it. You know what I'm saying? Your testimony is, you know, when you turn to Christ, I, I, I encourage any of you here who has not made a video yet and God changed your life and you're serving him, make a video. It's not that hard. If you need help, you know, contact me. I'll talk you through it on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Put it out there, man. So I love you people. I hope this encouraged you. God bless you. And uh, praise Jesus. I love you all. Amen.